After seeing, reading, and listening to the beautiful art created by different painters, architects, poets, singers, and musicians, I chose to specifically focus on three that were really able to use their work to immortalize events in Spanish history. And these three artists really captured the sight, sound, and emotion felt by Spaniards during their respective time periods and were just able to use their personal mediums to freeze those moments in history. The three contributors I'll be focusing on are Francisco de Goya, Cesar Vallejo, and Cameron de Iza. Francisco de Goya was alive from 1746 until 1828, and he was a Spanish painter. Cesar Vallejo lived from 1892 to 1938, and he was a Peruvian poet. And Cameron de la Isla was a Spanish flamenco singer, and he was alive from 1950 until 1992. Between Goya Vallejo and de la Isla, the three span a period from 1746 until 1992. And although a lot of historically significant events occurred during these times, I really wanted to emphasize the eight that affected my chosen artists and really influenced their works. The three events I'll mostly be focusing on um, before the artists are alive are the expulsion of Junes from Spain in 1492, the expulsion of the Moors from Spain in 1609, and the Great Gypsy Roundup in 1749. So the first event there is the expulsion of Jews from Spain, and this occurred when the monarchs of Spain, Ferdinand II and Isabella I, ordered the expulsion of practicing Jews to eliminate their religious influence. The second is the expulsion of the Moors from Spain in 1609 after King Philip III ordered um, their expulsion to eliminate the threat of them trying to practice Islam in Spain. And the third is the Gypsy Roundup, which occurred in 1749 when King Ferdinand VI ordered the imprisonment of gypsies and forced them into labor camps. So due to the prosecution of the Jews, Moors, and the Gypsies, all three cultures merged together and ended up creating a form of art called the flamenco, and it originates back to 1774. In addition to Spain's past history, there were several wars that occurred during these artists' lifetimes. These include the Peninsula War, World War I, the Spanish Civil War, and World War II. Now at the bottom of all these historical events, you can see that there's different eras listed, and a lot of these eras will end up affecting our artists, whether it be in their painting, their poetry, or their music. Our first historical artist is Francisco de Goya. Goya was born on March 30, 1746 in Pudatoto, Spain. He began painting at just 14 years old under Jose Luzon y Martinez, and he learned to master the use of warm colors and light brush, light brush strokes under him. Goya also studied Diego Velazquez's royal portraits for inspiration, and from him, Goya learned how to master the art of contrasting, including rich detail, and just having an overall phantasm and grandeur. Goya's early works show the influence of Martinez and Velazquez. The painting on the left really uses the pattern to show detail to light and show the contrast in the portrait, much like Velazquez and other Baroque painters used. And the painting on the right resembles Martinez and styles from the Rococo era with pastel colors, close attention to detail, and just overall playful tones. As Goya's talent grew, he began to incorporate his own styles into his paintings. He's really known for being able to capture the emotion in paintings, such as, you can see on the left, just the overall delicacy of royal sitters and the innocence in their children. In addition, Goya often used broad brushstrokes and painted extreme close attention to detail. Through this, he was able to show wealth, which really drew in the attention and applause of royals. Goya also used light as a way of highlighting important aspects in his paintings, such as his painting on the right, which, um, in which the child is the focal point of the piece. Goya also hid messages in his work through symbolism, 
For example, you can see the bird cage on the right, and that represents child's innocence. The Peninsular War began during Goya's lifetime. On May 2, 1808, the people of Madrid rebelled against French troops. This provoked French repression on the Spaniards and really just ignited the Peninsular War. The following day, on May 3, 1808, Napoleon's troops marched into Medina del Rio Seco, and the battle against the Span Sp Spanish citizens um, just really ended up leading to a lot of death from those trying to protect their city. In both of these paintings, Goya is able to capture fear and just the overall suffering of the Spanish people while also showing the ruthlessness of the French. In the left painting, Goya has the rebels mimic several popular matador postures, and by doing so, I really believe he's able to show the culture and Spanish pride that is really firing the revolution just by incorporating these bullfighting moves. In the painting on the right, Goya paints the Spaniards brighter than the French, and I think it just really emphasizes their character and emotion. Napoleon's troops, on the other hand, are really painted dark colors and they're faceless as well, so it just really doesn't allow the audience to connect emotionally to them. For the next 10 years, Goya continues to paint 85 images of all the violence and suffering that the Spaniards endured during the Peninsular War. Goya became isolated from politics and social life later on in his lifetime. He completed a series of frescoes called the Black Paintings. They mirror images that much look like nightmares. They have haunting themes in them, such as just violence, witches, cannibalism, and more. He uses dark tonalities, light and dark contrasting, and fluid brushstrokes to create the terror in these works and to really emphasize the violence. Overall, Goya had a huge impact artistically and historically during the late 18th and early 19th century. His early works embodied romanticism and helped inspire romantic artists throughout the whole 19th century. His horror-like images from the Black Painting series helped influence surrealist painters that would create an era in the early 20th century. Goya had a large historical influence on artists. He immortalized the horror and emotion of the whole Peninsular War and the violence and death that Spaniards faced while fighting for their freedom from the French. Also, just the overall grotesque imagery of the Disasters of War series really influenced painters such as Picasso to raise political awareness by using their artwork. The second historical artist I'll be focusing on is Cesar Vallejo. Vallejo was born on March 16, 1892 in Santiago de Chuca in La Libertad, Peru. Vallejo attended the University of Trujillo and graduated in 1915. In 1920, Vallejo got involved in a political field and was imprisoned for three months. So from this, and then also he suffered from poverty, a chronic illness, and the death of his mother, um, he really incorporated themes of alienation, suffering, compassion, and just all over anguish, and these are seen throughout his poetry. His first collection is called The Black Messengers, and it really depicts the suffering of the people in Trujillo and Lima. For example, he writes, those bloody blows are the crepitation of some getting burned on us by the oven's door to depict the just pain felt by Peruvian citizens. The poems in the Black Messengers contain literary modernist techniques such as symbolism, skepticism, and sickness of the world. Vallejo used skills such as repetition and ellipses along with just colorful language in this piece. Vallejo's piece, Paris, October 1936, narrates the march of the leftist party in Paris. I really believe that he used this writing to reach out and call on people to cut ties with right-wing tradition and just to start a revolution. When Vallejo says, From my great situation, from my actions, from my numbers split side to side, from all of this I'm the only one who leaves, I really do believe that he is describing himself, who despite this current well-off situation chooses to stand up for freedom 
and just separate from those laws and rulers of the past. He also words, from all of this, I'm the only one who leaves, from this bench I go away, from my pants, from my great situation, from my actions, from my numbers split side to side, from all of this, I'm the only one who leaves. And I just really believe that this verse also kind of reads in the same way and just says that he is trying to step aside and he can't do anything himself, but he's calling on everybody else to rally up. Vallejo's final poetry collection was called Human Poems. He wrote these poems during the Spanish Civil War, a time of suffering and death for Spanish citizens. In Masa, or it's also called Masses, Vallejo uses the line, so much love and it can do anything against death, but the corpse, how sad when I'm dying. I believe Vallejo wanted to spread a general message about having just compassion for general human life, especially after all the violence in the Spanish Civil War. Overall, Vallejo altered imagery by creating startling image of just violence and suffering. He changed traditional poetry rhythm by using harsh sounds and by incorporating alliteration. He immortalized the suffering of the Indian people in Peruvian history and also the Spaniards in the Spanish Civil War. His overall goal was just to spread compassion for human suffering, and through his literary techniques, he has continued to continue to influence these non-traditional poets for the last century. The third and final artist that I chose to focus on was Cameron de la Isla. De la Isla was born on December 5th, 1950 in San Fernando, Spain. He worked with his father as a blacksmith until his flamenco singing gained enough popularity to financially support his family. Later, De La Isla set off towards Madrid to further his music career. There he signed a record label and really began to produce music with his partner, with his partner Paco De Lucia. Cameron De La Isla sings with undeniable passion. He um, and Paco de Lucia relate the legends and stories of daily life that reflect experiences of the gypsies, Jews, and Moors throughout their suffering. Two examples of de la Isla's songs are Bularius and Coma de el Agua, and we are going to watch a couple clips of them, and you can just really see the passion that's used in his singing. So the first will be Bularius. Ay, tú le estás pidiendo a Dios. Ay, tú le estás pidiendo a Dios que mi madre se muriera. Ya mi madre se murió. Ya no hay que te quiera de menos. Te diga que eres el And then our second one here is going to be a clip from Como el Agua. Como el agua clara, ya baja del monte, ya sin quiero verte, de día y de noche. Ay, como el agua, como el agua. And it's just pretty evident that De La Isla is trying to call on everything inside of him to express the anguish that his ancestors had suffered through. His audience could sense his passion and relate to the suffering in his life. He began to incorporate new instruments such as the electric bass to modernize and revolutionize flamenco music to adapt it to modern times. So you could see in Bularius, it was just pretty general, just had a basic guitar. But in our second example, Kama a Agua, you could see some of those new instruments, such as the electric bass. De La Isla brought a lot of awareness to the lifestyles that gypsies were forced to live under since their execution in 1749. One example is seen in his song, Otro Galaxia. It reads, while other children studied at school in the morning, my childhood was the blacksmiths. And although the gypsies often lived in poverty and could not attend school, and this was also kind of true for the Jews and the Moors at the time, 